Hi, this is Les Posen, Fear of Flying Clinical Psychologist. Welcome, it's uh, the end of the first week of January 2024 as I record this. I hope 2023 ended safely and healthily for you and that you're looking forward to uh, lots of flying this year in 2024 as you move further and further away from the effects of the pandemic and more and more people want to travel. That's certainly been my finding the last several months that more and more people uh, are coming up for air and saying, well, it's time that I really tackle my various fears, including flying, and do something about it. It's been hanging around much too long and I've got things that I want to do. Now, late last year, I began a series of short videos looking at four components of overcoming a fear of flying or a fear of just about anything that you know is beyond reason in the sense that it's it's a fear that has gone kind of intrusive and it's kind of over the top a little bit. It's It's interfering in your quality of life. That's not to say that you want to get rid of every fear or your fear components, you need those to survive. They've been around for several hundred thousand years in terms of mammalian development. Uh, it's just that the things that we're afraid of nowadays are a little different than they were 60 or 80,000 years ago when our big brains were developing away from uh, our mammalian cousins like my hairy friend who's sitting over there, Scout. So the four things that I want to focus on uh, were these perceptions or sensations, behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. Lots of my colleagues in psychology want to tackle emotions first and try and delve into what's going on there and how to change those things quickly. And my finding is that that's not the way to do things when it comes to fear of flying and, and similar situations. Let them come along for the ride. But what you do want to do is change your appreciation and sensitivity to certain sensations and perceptions. You want to change your, what we call in the trade, self-talk or your automatic thoughts. And you want to change your behaviors. And when those things happen, your emotions will come along for the ride. But be wary of trying to convert fear into calmness or fear into happiness or whatever it might be to start with. If I can only feel happy, then I'd be able to contain myself on board a flight and be okay. I don't think that's the way to go. As I've said often, uh, the target behavior for fear of flying is self-management, knowing that you can handle whatever gets thrown at you on a regular, normal, commercial flight, and that if you should have periods or moments of calmness, bonus. Enjoy it while it lasts, but don't expect it to be there all the time and certainly don't aim for it to be the only way you can board a plane. You can board scared and fearful and apprehensive and concerned and still do it anyway. And I'll share with you my little secret that I share with my patients. For me, the most apprehensive part of flying, the part where I can feel my arousal levels are going up, is the reverse or the inverse of what it is for patients, and that's on landing. Most patients tell me on landing, they're already starting to feel relieved because they're counting down when this terror is going to be over with. For me, my apprehensions and arousals go up. And you might ask, why? Well, it's because I'm already thinking ahead to what's happening. Can I get out of this aircraft quick enough to maybe make an earlier flight, whereas I had to book it two hours between landing, say, in LA out of Melbourne and trying to catch a New York flight. Maybe there's a flight going only in an hour, which I couldn't book because I wouldn't be allowed to book. It's under two hours. But maybe now that we've got in early, there's a gate there. We've, we've got really good tailwinds. Now I can make it. And that's why I'm getting ready to get out of this plane, rehearse myself going through customs and getting all my action together. I'm apprehensive as the plane is coming in. Apprehensive as in I'm planning. I hope you see the difference between that and uh, and being apprehensive about I've got no control. I have little control over how customs, whatever else is going to work, but 
I do know something about how it's going to be, and I know how I can manage my way through this. Today I want to focus again on thoughts, what we call in the trade automatic thoughts, or sometimes referred to as self-talk. Okay, uh, And that's because the way you talk to yourself about something that's about to happen or something that you're in the midst of right now will either serve to focus your attention on carrying out things you've well rehearsed or they'll set off the alarm bells in that part of your brain known as the limbic system which is ready and ready to go to act on a threat the threat could be some of those first things that you saw or heard your sensations or perceptions that's the external world impinging on you. But it can also be your internal world, what you're feeling inside of you. Oh, I'm feeling my stomach's in knots. Oh, my heart's being so fast. It could be those perceptions and sensations, but it could also be yourself. Oh my God, here we go. I knew this would happen. This is terrible. I can't manage this. That self-talk will also trigger that same radar system that's detecting threat to go, yes, boss, ready for action and cause the very things you're trying to avoid, increase heart rate, break out in a sweat, increase muscle tension, they will, they will cause those things to increase in preparation for dealing with the threat, which might be run, panic and freeze, fight, which might become in a plane, become verbally aggressive, nasty, snarky, or, um, or it might just be becoming very, very quiet and, and appeasing of, of uh, yes, whatever you want me to do, okay, okay, fine, fine, just to make the threat go away. So be wary of your self-talk. Let me show you what I mean by self-talk. Have a look at this uh, hammering situation. Just imagine that in this situation, if you missed the nail and hit your finger, would you be likely to call out, ouch? or something a little more uh, not accepted socially. Even on a desert island, just imagine that you were stranded on a desert island, you found some wood, somewhere along the way in a toolkit that you found, rescued with some hammers and nails which you can put together a raft of some sort. Think uh, Tom Hanks in, in Castaway. And, uh, and you're hit, you hit yourself. And you go, ouch! Well, think about this. Ages ago, Calling out like that would clearly call the attention of the people around. We were, we were mainly in small clans. So calling attention to you being in pain brings attention to you. So that's still part of us. But the other thing it does is it switches on our threat alarm system, which starts a whole series of bodily processes, which helps to induce some hopefully pain relief increases the, the level of prostaglandins in your bloodstream, which will help the bruising. It's an automatic response that we do. If you have automatic response when you hear or see things in a plane, which can be labeled as perfectly normal, the change of engine sounds, the movement in turbulence, and you go, oh my God, what was that? If they're not just thoughts. They are triggering ideas or self-talk that will get your limbic system, in particular the threat response mitigation system known as the amygdala, to kick in and begin a whole process of gearing up to manage whatever threat it is, except it's not a threat. So your task will be find some videos of those situations where you know historically you tend to have some self-talk. Oh my God, what's that noise? Oh, what's happening now? Oh, look at what's going on. Play those videos. Stop it every so often. Allow yourself to have those thoughts. Write them down even. Say it out aloud. And then change that over to, not I've got this, but you. You coach yourself. You've got this. You know what's going on. You know that's a normal sound. That's the engines after takeoff coming back. I have a video about that. That turbulence, that's just the jelly moving. I've got a video about that. But start off by saying, you've got this, but be wary of engaging thoughts which are going to trigger a catastrophic-like reaction because it's only going to perpetuate. You'll get better at this. 
it will perpetuate your fear response. You'll get better and better at going into early signs of meltdown when you don't need to. So start to monitor your language. Play some YouTube videos of not, not of turbulence and stuff, but just normal flight stuff. Planes taking off, climbing out, turning, whatever it might be, landing. Stop it every so often and say, well, what would my self to what would I be saying? What have I said to myself? Change it over to you've got this, you know what this is. That's a sports psychology technique where you've got to act as a self directing coach, not I've got this. That tends to go much more to that threat response system. You've got this, creating some distance tends to bring in the newer part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, which is the planning, decision making thinking area of the brain, okay, and keeps that pesky limbic system somewhat at bay. Later on, we'll work towards changing the emotions, but you want to change thoughts first, and perceptions and sensations, your appreciation of them, and behaviors that then follow. We'll continue with that in the next video. I hope that's been useful for you. And do some practice. Make some comments down below and write to me some of your automatic thoughts. And perhaps in the next video, I will try and deal with that. Bye for now.